morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are connected from. My name is Chris Atem. I will be your moderator for this special site event, Agricultural Technologies for Feeding Cities. I want to start by wel welcoming all of you, especially our external audience to the session. I am the coordinator of the Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation, the TAD program at the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, uh, IITA. IITA, Ibadan. The third program is funded by the African Development Bank in partnership with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I'm very delighted that we are all here together in this session to review the activity of the program in feeding African cities. We have one hour and 30 minutes for the session. We have allocated the first 30 minutes to three keynote presentations that will set the scene for the session. The next 30 minutes will be for some panel discussions, giving you a deeper insight into the operations of the third program. And the last 30 minutes will be to interact with you, our external audience, through the questions and comments that you will post to our presenters and panelists as we go along based on what you are hearing. All of this is within the framework, all of this is within the framework of TAT, within the Feed Africa initiative of the AFDB. Dr. Ken Tundashio, Deputy Director General of Partnership for Delivery at IITA, will then present to us the role of partners in TAP, especially partners with the CGIAR in making this transformation most useful. My colleague, Innocent uh, in Musubimana, head of the TAP Clearing House, will take the mic and give us a summary overhead of the key TAP compact achievement that fits into the Feed Africa framework using public and private partners. Before Dr. Dashi will come on, we shall first start with Dr. Martin Fregene, Director of Agriculture and Agro-Industry at the African Development Bank, on the framework of TAD within the Feed Africa Initiative of the AMDB. Panel discussions shall follow the presentations, giving us some more depth into the implementation of TAD through a series of questions. We shall then open up the interaction with the audience through the questions and comments that they would have shared with us on the platform chat site. Again, to help us have a very good interactive session at the end, by way of addressing your questions, we encourage you, our audience, to send your questions and comments through the chat box on the meeting platform as we go through the presentation and panel inter interaction. I believe all the presentations will be done in English but we do have an interpretation service for our French-speaking audience. Please ensure that you are on the right channel and do well to post any questions and or comments in French also. Thank you all again for joining us on this special event, this special session today. There is a popular say that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together with others. I believe we are here today to share with you how we are working together to go as far as we can with the African Agricultural Transformation Agenda to enable us to feed our cities. Let us get started with the keynote presentation. I want at this point to call on Dr. Martin Fregene, Director of Agriculture and Agro-Industry at the African Development Bank, to give us his keynote presentation. Dr. Fregene, the floor is yours to present to us. Thank you very much, um, Chris. And um, thank you um, also, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today at this um, presentation of the Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation. I'm joined in this presentation by Dr. Ken Deschiel, who is the um, Deputy Director General of IIT, and also Dr. Innocent, who is um, the head of the Clearing House. The title of our presentation is Feeding African Cities Through Agricultural Transformation. In the next couple of slides, we will we'll describe how 
working with an ecosystem of partners, African Development Bank and other development partners are striving to raise the productivity of crop production um, on the continent of Africa. Here is the overview of my presentation. I will talk about the current situation, the, what, what the context is, then, then I will talk about chat itself, and, and, to, and I will also describe some achievements to show that it's a model that is working, and then I will talk about the next phase of TAT. Well, in the last decade or so, Africa has made some progress with, with food production. Food production has actually gone up. But at the same time, Africa is faced with some of the most daunting problems is, is it, with, with regards to food production. We've had the worst locust invasion in 100 years. We've had the fall army worm that, that came into the continent in 2016. We've had droughts in southern Sahel and the region of Africa. Of course, we had a cyclone in Idai, and also there's been a, 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 a recurrent you know, um, incidence of farmer husban conflict. Today's estimated that 72 million people <coughs> in the Sahelian in West Africa are already food insecure. This number is probably higher, but at least the ones that um, have been recorded you know, by, by, by aid agencies is, is 70 million people. COVID-19 has also had a you know, huge disruption to food supply chains, both agro-inputs and also food supply chains. So Africa, before the COVID-19 was already in a precarious situation, then came COVID-19 with all its um, disruptions and and then even the, the further reduction in food production. But we all know from looking across the world that there is no way you can feed a growing population without closing the yield gaps and having a robust agribusiness sector. This, this graph shows you where the yield, maize yields over the last um, 130 years or so, 140 years or so. As you can see, African maize yields are, are today where the U.S. maize yields were in the 1960s. While, while, while the U.S. and Africa have about the same amount of land grown to maize, 350 million hectares, but the U.S. produces some, some, some six times more maize than Africa, just for one reason, productivity. Productivity is such an important component of, of any agricultural um, sector because it's the driver of profitability in every value chain. And closing the yield gap is therefore fundamental to having a profitable for, um, and also robust agribusiness sector. You know, ag agriculture should be a business. It's not a way of life. It's not a um, you know, you know, um, development program. It's a business. And for it to be a business, people must make money. People must invest money and have a good return on their investments. You know, bridging the yield gaps in Africa, you know, requires significant investments in getting hybrid seeds to farmers or seeds of improved seeds, and not, not just seeds alone, but also breeds of and also um, of improved crop and livestock and fishery, you know, you know varieties. It, it also, in, you know, entails getting fertilizer across to farmers. It entails um, infrastructure, rural infrastructure, irrigation, roads, you know, storage, and many others. But it all begins with making sure the farmers have the right technologies in, in their hands. So the African Development Bank launched in 2016 in response to the declining um, per capita food production on, on the continent, what we call the Feed Africa. Feed Africa takes a value chain approach to, to agriculture and strives to raise productivity, increase value addition, and also efficient marketing and also processing of them. Agricultural products. TAT that we're discussing today is the beginning of the chain. That is where it all begins with production and efficient production. TAT is going to is going to be the catalyst that that drives agricultural product and, and production and also probably addition on say on the continent. Well, when we when, when we began TAT, the vision was to increase productivity by deploying proven agricultural technologies to farmers. We had a target of 40 million farmers to get the best available technologies into the hands of 40 million farmers. And also, we decided to take a, a, a regional approach. Many of the boundaries in, 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 in Africa, no political boundaries, but they actually um, cut across the same agro-ecosystems. They also cut across the same cultures and the same languages. 
So you cannot just take a national approach, a, a country step by step approach. You need to take a regional approach. TAD also is unique in the sense that it brings together partners, not just for financing, but partners for, 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 for technology delivery, partners also for, you know, for, for, for advocacy, for policy reforms, and all that. I will leave the structure and then um, the details of how TAT operates to the other speakers. For my own talk, I will just um, emphasize on what is the theory of change? What is the philosophy? What is what, what did we set out to achieve from the TAT? First of all, we should ask, what is TAT doing differently from what has been done before? Why is TAT unique? First of all, as, as I mentioned before, the partnership is why TAT is unique. You know, well, the TAT takes a public-private partnership approach. That is the public sector providing an enabling environment and supporting the private sector to do what it does best, you know, business. TAT also takes an approach to resolving political bottlenecks. We all know that seed policies often, in many African countries, act as an obstacle rather than facilitating the movement of, um, of, of um, new improve varieties. For example, there's some countries that don't have seed laws. So I can sell grain as a hybrid seed in those countries and get away with it. So seed um, policy is extremely important for you to, to, to succeed. That's one of the things that is doing, addressing policy bottlenecks. Another thing is the supply chains for food production. How do farmers get the seeds that they, that they, that they produce? Normally from the agro dealers, but many farmers are too far from agro dealers. So how do we bring closer to farmers, you know, access of these new technologies. And that is creating demand. You know, there is a saying in Latin America that, that the best fertilizer for any crop is the market. How do we link both input markets and output markets to the producer so that he gets a value, he gets, he gets, he, he gets a return on his investment. And then the most important thing is the actors, the SMEs who feed 60% of our populations in Africa, both from the input side, from the production, from the value addition, from the third party logistics, everything. How do we engage them, make sure that they are very much part of the, of the TAT story? I will just use um, one example that's um, hit tolerant wheat to describe how TAT operates and to describe what the original um, approach was and then how, how it has succeeded. Like I said earlier, heat tolerant wheat is, um, is very important in dry areas of the world where irrigation is possible. Areas like Ethiopia, Sudan, where you know the, the very hot, you know, um, but winters, but cold in the night, you can grow wheat, but often the yields are, are low. So what Ikara has done was um, to produce the varieties. But we know that um, from the varieties to millions of farmers requires seed companies. It requires, you know, governments. So what TAD did, working with ICARDA and also working with um, um, other partners, we were able to bring a lot of seed companies together and then also bring, um, you know, fin financiers of, seed, of um, agricultural production together. And the approach has been get TAD to bulk up certified seeds, get TAT to build capacity of seed companies, to establish demo trials, all towards the risk in adoption of new technologies so that adoption of new technologies is no longer, you know, they, they, all the risk is not carried alone by the seed company, but rather TAT helps to share in that risk, the risk of bulking up of varieties that farmers don't know very well you know, the risk of making sure that they, they, they you know, they're delivered to farmers. And that has actually led to a huge increase in the seeds of these new heterogeneous varieties that um, Ikara produced, but have not been able to de deliver to farmers. As of, as, of, as of last year, you know, um, heterogeneous varieties have now been, you know, bulked up and distributed in Sudan, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Kenya, and Mali. Over 40,000 farmers, you know, alone in a, in a, in a, in, a, in, 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 in Sudan have actually increased their yields from, from doubling their yields actually in those, in those areas. This, this table just summarizes what has been done. 
And um, I won't talk too much about it because down later in the program, um, there's going to be more details discussed. Uh, discuss, but just to show you that from a few thousand tons of these heat tolerant wheat varieties, we today have more than 50,000 tons of them, of them, of, of them, of them, of them, of them produced. You know, we have also um, more than 20 seed companies, you know, involved in, in, in producing these seeds. Suddenly, a technology that can actually improve yield of wheat, improve wheat production in Sudan and, and, and in Ethiopia is now in the hands of farmers. This is very, very important in, in the sense that these countries are all major wheat importing countries. They, they import a lot of wheat. And now, through TAS, working with the seed companies, working with the government, we are able to begin to roll back some of that um, food import. TAS has run for uh, about three years now, and um, it, it will be any next year. We're, we're now working on the second phase of TAT. On the second phase of TAT, build up on the success in the first phase. The first phase has, has shown that if you work with seed companies, if you work with government, you can actually bulk um, seeds. But then the, the question arises, how do you make sure that all the farmers get the seeds in, in other countries where government is not so much involved? You need agro dealers. You need people that will, will be able to produce those seeds. And then how do you also make sure the farmers can access markets? You need aggregators. You need third party logistic providers. Then also, how do you ensure that um, some of these new um, new um, varieties of wheat, you know, will find um, a, a place in, in the market? You know, you also need policy to, to ensure that um, markets are available for this. Um, see, if you don't provide the right policy environment, you will produce and people will not uptake. So then, lastly, how do you also ensure that you can go across regions? You know, with respect. To technology, you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know, for for increased productivity. So all these different, you know, areas involve SMEs. So we are designing a project, you know, a, a phase, phase two on how to support the SMEs, still supporting the the ecosystem of um, of technology, but also supporting the SMEs, the de the agro dealers, the aggregators, supply logistics, working to ensure that we can actually go to to even greater scale. It's all about the partners. It's all about the right technologies. It's all about the enabling environment. That is why TAD is really emphasizing, you know, you know, in the second, in the next phase, making sure that everybody at the table is um, catered for. I will stop here and I will allow um, in, in my colleagues to continue. But I just want to thank you all for listening, and to um, ask that you continue to, you know, join to, to stay with us as we continue this session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Fregene. I will now call on Dr. Kenton Dashu, Deputy Director General of Partnership for Delivery at IIPA, to make his keynote presentation. Dr. Dashu, over to you. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, Martin, thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction. You really got it off, uh, us off started on the right foot. Yes. Uh, TAT is under the Feed Africa umbrella. Uh, and for Feed Africa to, to succeed, we need to achieve two goals. First, we need to significantly raise agriculture productivity. And second, we need to move African production much higher on the value chain with agribusinesses producing and selling processed goods, not simply basic commodities. And TAT is really focused on the first goal, raising agriculture productivity. There are a number of other activities, uh, programs, et cetera, in the African Development Bank Feed Africa program that will handle other areas. One of the things that uh, is important is the actual grain yields or average cereal grain yields in the continents are listed here, starting from 1960 through 2015. And the top line is North America and Europe. There's two lines in the middle there, Asia and Latin America. And then the bottom line is Sub-Saharan Africa. This is the challenge that we face. It's very, uh, same thing that Martin told us, we need to increase the grain yields. The good news is that between 2000 and 2015, agriculture
agriculture production has grown more rapidly in sub-Saharan Africa than in any other region in the world. This has put more money in the hands of millions of farmers, and that helps stimulate rural economic growth. This is the good news. The bad news is that the rapid growth was driven primarily by expansion of cultivated area and not increases in grain yields. So the way forward is we need to raise the productivity of existing farmlands. And to do this, we need farmers to adopt the new technologies and sustainable practices so that they will get these high yields that we need. To do this, we need the private sector, large, small, and micro businesses to make the investments required so that the inputs will be available, so that uh, there will be market channels for the off takers, for the et cetera, et cetera, private sector heavily involved. And finally, we see that many African governments are seeking policy and technical guidance to help them develop and implement their programs in a practical way. And TAT is ready to partner with them. Now, we also uh, know that TAT deploys these proven technologies in partnerships with governments and the private sector. And this is done at a moderate to a low scale, uh, meaning that, for example, TAT may, uh, the core of TAT may do this in say five communities in a country, but we need to do it in a thousand communities, 2000, 10,000 communities. And to do this, that's where government programs come in and the private sector can really scale these things out massively. So uh, TAT is more of a catalyst to stimulate governments to invest their resources to get the private sector. So the vision is to reach 40 million farmers and to add 120, 120 million metric tons. And we want to radically transform African agriculture. We're not talking about changing a little thing here and a little thing there and increasing yields by 5%, 8%. No, we need major changes so that yields are increased by 50%, 80%, 100%. And we're, TAT is doing this through eight priority investment uh, intervention areas. And these areas include self-sufficiency in rice, cassava intensification, food and nutrition security in the Sahel, transforming African savannas, revitalizing tree plantations, horticulture, wheat, and inland fish production. So if you're involved or interested in any of these key areas, you can be part of TAT and we want you to be with us. So the, the seed funding uh, or the catalyst that funding that that TAT is using is focusing on nine commodity compacts. And this word compact, what it means is teams, it means teams of institutions led by one institution that have agreed to come together to uh, work on that specific area. And uh, what I've listed here is the nine commodities that TAT is presently working on, along with the institution that is leading that particular area. We have maize with AATF, rice, Africa rice, wheat, Icarda, sorghum and millet, Icrasat, uh, cassava, IATA, high iron beans, Siat, orange flesh sweet potato, SIP, aquaculture, world fish, livestock, Ilri. These are the commodity compacts. Then we have six enabler compacts. These are the compacts that are supporting the commodity compacts. Those things, those tools that the um, commodity compacts need to support them so that they can be successful. This includes soil and soil and fertilizer with IFDC, water management with WIMI, capacity delivery and technology outreach with FARA, enable youth with IITA, the fall armyworm compact, that is uh, an emergency compact addressing this terrible pest led by IITA and policy with AATF. You'll notice that there are actually nine CGIR centers working uh, in this system. So it's, it's following the, the new one CGIR model for Africa. So we're very excited about that. The key here is the institutions leading the compacts are the, are the African authorities on that subject. They can provide the best guidance, the best advice. TAT is working in 27 countries, and you can see them here. 
uh, in the, with the green areas. Uh, and we hope to expand to some more countries. So uh, the key here is the CGIAR and other institutions provide the package of practices and innovative solutions that supersede the traditional technologies that are currently available. This is the core of TAT to get the best production technologies that are available for farmers and get them in the hands of farmers. So the role of the private, private sector is extremely important um, because they provide the long-term sustainable agribusiness growth. Markets in the urban and rural communities capable of moving massive scaling, uh, both the input markets and the output markets so that the production uh, in, the, in the rural areas will move to the cities for sale. You know, and this is not as easy it sound, as it sounds because in many countries, the marketing channels are from the port, the importation of goods to the big cities. So this is very important to the private sector. And some other examples of partnerships that are critically important are seed companies for seed systems, input supplies. These are the agro dealers and the manufacturers are the producers of the inputs. Um, of course, the marketing channels and the provision of farm mechanization is extremely important. Once again, I want to uh, put emphasis that linking TAT to country investments with the countries, the government's programs, the private sector programs, the core of TAT can provide that stimulus, but we need those partners to really scale out. And we haven't talked about how we do the scaling. And uh, that's a whole subject in itself, but basically it's looking for the bottlenecks and correcting those bottlenecks that are preventing farmers from getting the technologies that they need. And if you want to go to the website called Scaling Readiness, you can get some more details on that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your kind attention and you are all welcome to join TAT. Together, we will transform African agriculture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Dashi, for that great and stimulating presentation. Highlighting what TAT is all about, the strategies to engage partners and the use of country linkages to ensure that we achieve our goals and transform African agriculture. Without any waste of time, I will call on my colleague, Inonsen Mosobimana, to give us a brief overview of the achievement of some of the TAT compacts. Inonsen, if you attend, please. Thank you, moderator. Good day to all of you. And thank you for joining us in this session. Special thanks to Martin and uh, Ken Dashil for setting the stage for this uh, session. Uh, for me, it will be uh, taking you through with examples, with examples of achievement of thoughts for the last two years. And uh, from the uh, previous presenters, presenters, it was very clear that the TAT program works. It has proven uh, achievement and through a very strong partnership with uh, the CGR centers, uh, the National Extension Services and National Research Institute, the private sector, the farmers organization to make this happening by increasing productivity uh, across commodities. So as the TAT started for the last two years, the target is to reach 40 million farmers on the continent by 2025 with uh, a proven technology that these farmers are able to access to proven technology to be able to double crop productivity, livestock, and fishery so that the poverty and malnutrition and food insecurity are uh, lifted across the continent. So far, where we are, uh, so far we have reached for the, after two years, we have reached to 50, almost 50% 50 of our target, and 19 million of beneficiaries benefited from these technologies. Uh, as that program, the main major big component is availability and accessibility of quality improved seed. So through this collaboration with the seed companies, farmers association, uh, government, who were able to produce these metric tons across commodities from 
grains, legumes, root and tubers, and aquaculture. The purpose is mainly only addressing issue of food insecurity, but also tackling the issue of malnutrition that is across the continent, especially by availing quality proved seed of high iron beans, and also look to the uh, orange sweet potato as uh, nutrition values as we go around. So the root and tubers that are very important food security, uh, we work with uh, uh, the, the compact, the government, the research institute and extension services to avail all these cuttings uh, to farmers who are able to access to these high yielding varieties. The same applies for aquaculture, a very important commodity when it comes to source of income, but also as a source for uh, nutrition, nutritious food. Let's take you through with example, very specific example of achievement when you talk about the maize commodity, with, uh, which is very important as a, a commodity at, at the continent in terms of the food security and also uh, access to, uh, uh, to, to income for farmers. So for the last two years, uh, through this network of collaboration, who, uh, by lead of IITF, who is a, a compact leader, uh, together with company, uh, companies, city companies, National Research Institute, working with farmers organization, were able to reach 2.3 million of farmers across the, uh, uh, the, the, the continent, especially Western part, when you go to Eastern and Southern part of continent. And this was not only availing a high yielding uh, variety and uh, uh, drought tolerant variety of maize, but coupled with a technology of uh, efficient water use and also the rate of fertilizer as we work closely with IFDC, but also with uh, uh, International Water Management Institute to make this availability of technology to farmers. So this has led to increase of uh, income farmers. So before the intervention, they were able, they were uh, ha uh, having income of uh, 300 USD per hectare, and now it has reached up to uh, uh, almost 500 uh, USD. Uh, with this collaboration with uh, seed companies, 28 of them, and this is an innovative way that these companies were much engaged by uh, uh, engaging with farmers uh, through the demonstration plot, field day, to capacity building, but also creating the demand for farmers that are able to understand the importance of using high yielding variety and drought tolerant maize varieties. Another example is the sorghum and millet, which is a very important uh, commodities when you go to the Sahel and Savannah area of the continent, whereby with working uh, with uh, uh, ICRISAT and uh, uh, together with countries, especially through the National Research Institute and the extension services within the countries and uh, uh, seed company, we're able to avail uh, the high yielding variety to farmers and uh, the yield of uh, sorghum has increased from 1.2 metric tons to three metric tons per hectare. While for millet, it went from 0 0.7 metric tons to 1.7 metric tons per hectare when it comes to. But there's something to highlight here is also not only as developing this high yielding variety, the technology is coming up with uh, 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 this uh, maize, no, this uh, millet and sorghum as a source of flour for food security, but also at the same time as a, a source of biomass, which is a very important source of feed as important livestock in this area. So that is a dual purpose uh, uh, of, of this variety that were able to respond to the need of farmers. So we're able to deploy one point to cover 1.6 million hectares of uh, sorghum, 280,000 hectares of uh, for millets across, uh, with this intervention area so that we're able to use all these uh, improved 
uh, seed and uh, packages of technology to farmers. Another important element that we would like to share with you as we move forward is this important commodity of uh, uh, aquaculture, which is very important as you go to Western, Central, Eastern, Southern Africa, that we reach to 250,000 farmers uh, by working with this network of, uh, uh, of uh, especially private company, uh, the National Research Institute and Extension Services to avail this package of technology, especially the fast growing uh, disease resistant uh, fish, but also low quality feed that is accessible by farmers and improving post harvest uh, uh, technology of fisheries. And this was happening uh, through a very strong partnership as you see on the, on the picture, the youth has been a very uh, a strong partner throughout when it comes to this uh, 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 partnership as we promote this technology throughout these countries uh, to avail uh, this technology to farmers and also increase uh, income. So that is one of the key achievements. We double the income for farmers that were able to access to this technology from 900 uh, USD to almost uh, to 1800 uh, USD harvest as compared before and after intervention. Uh, the another example I would like to, to share with you the, comp the livestock compact, which is uh, through early leadership uh, with working also with uh, uh, the, the National Extension Services and, and the Research Institute were able to avail this package of technology, especially uh, the dual purpose uh, breeds and the uh, high quality peel marsh that uh, are a source of, of feed, but also improving the forage as a supplement, also other supplement, as we promote the fattening that was taken up by the youth and that has changed the life of uh, farmers in this area of intervention that were working with as at, in partnership with all private government to make this happen in the continent. So my last uh, 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 slide is will be actually uh, how based on this experience of the last two years, and as uh, Martin have already uh, uh, presented. So moving forward, we try to work closely. The issue is now that we, the model is proven to work, is providing a good result in terms of productivity. It is through a strong partnership. So the next uh, phases will be strongly engaging with countries so that we are able to take this to the scale. Engaging countries in a way that a government are able to accommodate uh, programs that are integrating these technologies so that we are able to take this technology to more farmers and bring more smiles, as we see our, uh, our mother there, that all farmers on the continent have this smile due to accessing to this technology. So by working with close with government uh, we'll, and, and also development partners, we're able to, to work a uh, design together uh, the program that are accommodating this and they're accompanying them because we have already infrastructure and the capacity to accompany this whole process as we take this at a scale. So another lesson learned uh, throughout as we look to the, uh, this promotion of uh, uh, cross uh, uh, seed, uh, the, 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 the cross boundary seed movement, uh, it was highlighted, uh, especially the issue, the hindrance of in terms of uh, regional variety disease and registration uh, policies. So we will be working closely at the regional level and the national level, where we have already this experience that by working government, uh, doing with uh, an, an assessment at national level to understand the seed issue uh, in terms of regulatory framework, policy that are able to accommodate all this transboundary of movement of seed, fertilizer, and the agricultural goods. The same applies to, as we move forward, we'll be strengthening this uh, uh, input supply from uh, agro-dealer network as we build this strong agro-dealership network as we avail this technology closer to the farmers 
and also availing to them the access to finances issues uh, that were able to avail this technology closer to the farmers as we promote the value chain approach from farmer uh, for input supply, producers, processors, and the transporters who link to the market on the, uh, on, on, in the cities and even at the export. So they are able to bring all this smile to our continent as we transform agriculture. This is through this strong partnership, together we can make this happening and take this at a scale and reach more farmers on the continent. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Innocent, for that excellent overview. Very captivating indeed. I'm sure our audience have been noting and posting on our chat box questions and comments that they have from this presentation. Again, we shall be looking at what you have posted and give the presenters a chance to answer your questions during the interactive session. Before we get to that, it is panel discussion time. I would now like to engage our panelists to help shed more light into what and how the CAP program is doing to transform African agriculture and feed our cities. We shall be doing this in the form of some questions that I shall be posting to each of them. But first, let's meet our panelists. We have in the panel Dr. Abbas Adebayo from IITA, based in Tanzania. Abbas leads the Cassava Hard Compact. We also have Dr. Zabi Bishal from ICADA, based in Addis Ababa at the moment, leading the Wheat Compact. And Dr. Irene Frempong from FARA, based in Accra, who is leading the Capacity Development and Outreach Compact, a Nebula Compact. From Innocence achieve, uh, Achievement Overview presentation, we heard a lot about some of the key roles that the compacts are playing in the implementation of the TAP program. Quite a good record of achievement, I must add. Dr. Abbas, let me first start with you. You are the head of the Kasava, Kasava Compact. Could you briefly explain to us what Compact is actually all about and how it functions? In doing so, please try to highlight the partnership dimension within the Kasava Compact for us. Dr. Abbas. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akem. And um, I would like to appreciate the presentations made by uh, previous pre presenters. Uh, Cassava Compact focuses on achieving rapid intensification of cassava across all the cassava producing countries in Africa. And so for that matter, we focus on productivity improvement, increasing mechanization, and uh, promotion of value, value addition. And for us to be successful, it's important that the value chain actors are also linked to the market. And we need to catalyze investments, both government investment in agriculture and cassava in particular, as well as private sector investment in cassava production and uh, marketing uh, processing. So this is what we focus on. But in each country, we do engage in strategic alliances or partnerships with the private and public institutions to drive this transformation that we would like to achieve. And these partners are usually the National Agricultural Research and Extension Institutions, the International Research and Development Centers. We do partner with technology, uh, technolo technology companies, agro-processors, policy makers, and so on. But one important group that TAT begins to focus on is a group of countries that have cassava development programs, or they do have loan programs that they are invest, uh, investing on. And so cassava compact becomes a very good partner for such countries to access new technologies, 
in order to ensure that the investments yield the expected uh, results. And we have done this in many countries and we are supporting uh, uh, the countries to implement their country programs on cassava development. We are supporting Togo. Uh, DRC is developing a presidential initiative as we speak and we are providing uh, input into that. Central Africa Republic, it's uh, going to implement a country program with, with loans and we're helping or supporting these countries. So with this group of partners, we form what we call the Cassava Compact. And that compact with the group of partners, we co-invest in the uh, technology out outreach activities that we do. So how do we then structure our program to work together? First, we do have national meetings, consultations, and so on. And we design the program, we decide which technologies are important in each country, and we decide in which agroecologies in those countries that we will deploy the first set of equipment, and we decide or, uh, the partners or the beneficiaries that would uh, be involved. And so we train as we de deploy the uh, improved technologies. As we train, the national institutions use their uh, in-country resources to move those technologies from the first set of agroecologies where we introduce improved technologies. They move to other uh, agroecologies. That is the arrangement that we have for co-investment. With the seed money that we have in tax, national institutions have been investing their own resources on those technologies that we have uh, introduced. And together, we do monitoring and evaluation. We learn lessons. We understand what needs to be improved. And that uh, is helping us to know exactly what model will work in other countries. That is the approach that we follow in Cassava Compact. Back to you, Dr. Akem. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas. Dr. Bishar, could you also address the same question in relation to the wheat compact, please? What is the wheat compact and who are the key partners? Very briefly, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and uh, good day, everyone. Why wheat is important, and we know that wheat is a major stable food crop in Africa, where 60% of consumption is based on imports draining the national economy. So the wheat compact it aims at bringing transformational impact and expansion of domestic wheat production to achieve wheat self-sufficiency in Africa. To do that, we are scaling high yielding and high grain quality heat tolerance improved varieties. This has been the question in the past, where the issue of grain quality, the issue of yield was actually one of the main constraints. So we are uh, promoting these technologies bundled with good agricultural practices from land preparation all the way to post-harvest management to minimize the losses. On the other hand, we are also bulking, large scale bulking and supply of quality seed to the farmers as has been mentioned earlier by Dr. Murthy to make sure that farmers really get access to the existing technologies. The main purpose of this is actually to increase wheat productivity and production to enhance food security, economic growth, poverty alleviation, contributing to farmers' income, value addition, job creation, and supply the agro-industry to feed the urban population. The Wheat Compact has established what we call innovation platforms at a strategic and operational level bringing together all wheat value chain actors, which we call multi-stakeholders platform, engaging the farmers, the private public seed producers, input providers, extension services and research system, 
financial institutions, be it the rural microfinance, as well as agricultural development banks where they exist, non-governmental organization, sector association like farmers association, seed trade association, flour millers associations, agro processors, and above all policy makers and the donors. The main purpose is to bring all these actors along the value chain so that each and every one contributes, defines its roles and responsibilities and contribute to the transformation of the wheat sector in Africa so that Africa can really feed itself instead of importing wheat from somewhere else. Thank you very much, Zaldi. This is really interesting indeed and provides us with additional information to what we heard from the keynote presentation. That is all about partnership, and we achieve this by working in compacts that bring these partners together. Through this compact partnership, can you now briefly share with us some of the key achievements that have been made by your compacts? This time, let's start with you, Dr. Bishal, since you are still on the throne. And we, what are the I would key say achievements? A, a consistent policy advocacy by the wheat compact enabled wheat self-sufficiency to become a national agenda in target countries where there is high level interministerial steering committees and technical committees were established and roadmaps were being developed to achieve wheat sufficiency in target countries, which shows an overall government com commitment in these countries to reverse the issue of seed import. This actually led to production of over 1.2 million tons of wheat grain, which can be valued at $255.4 million, which could be linked to the agro-processing industry to ensure that the flour millers are working and feeding the cities. Of course, as has been mentioned by Martin, ensuring the availability and access to quality seed is what matters. So, the Wheat Compact created a partnership with over 58 private and public seed companies and seed producers cooperatives and farmer groups, producing around 150,000 tons of seed of different classes, reaching close to 1.5 million farmers, of which 33% are female, directly through scaling or through access to seed. Of course, the Wheat Compact activities created additional job opportunities in wheat grain production, seed production, value addition, and other related services, as well as the agro-processing along the wheat value chain. These are some of the highlights of the wheat compact. Thank you very much, Dr. Bijal. Dr. Abbas, please share with us what you have achieved with cassava, very briefly, please. Thank you very much. Um, we, we know that, that cassava development would require seeds, would require value addition. There cannot be cassava commercialization or intensification without these two important aspects. One achievement we have made so far is the building of a uh, foundation for robust seed system in some of the countries where we are working on. We are working with institutions within some countries, DRC Congo, Zambia, Tanzania, Togo, Syria alone, to develop a robust seed system. And we are relying on a particular technology that uh, would enable the private sector or national institutions to begin to produce uh, seeds in millions in-house. It's a new technology that allows rapid multiplication of cassava to produce platelets. And that would help in increasing seed availability. So in about five countries now, we have supported them to set up their seed bulking facilities. In some of these countries, the seed bulking facilities are already functioning and they are producing uh, cassava platelets, which they would then move to the field and produce uh, uh, cuttings, and that helps in developing a new generation of 
seed growers across these countries. That's important. Number two, value addition. We have introduced innovations for farm gate processing. We have introduced make, uh, processing machinery across some of the countries that we are working on, uh, working in. And these countries would be able to produce food products that can feed the cities. And this is important for industrialization. Rural processing, making the products and taking to the cities will increase the income of the rural dwellers. Those are two big aspects that we, we have uh, contributed to across some of the countries that we are working in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Abbas, for that enlightenment. Uh, Dr. Dashir, in his keynote presentation, made mention of commodity compacts as well as enabler compacts. We now understand that commodity compacts focus on the various commodity value chains that we target to increase productivity and transform African agriculture. Dr. Irene Trenko, I know that your organization, FARAC, is one of the enabler compacts, the capacity development and technology average compact. Can you please throw a bit of light on what these enabler compacts are all about and how they function? You may also wish to briefly describe the linkages between the enablers and the commodity compacts. Irene, please. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akem, and recognizing all the previous speakers um, who have set the pace and the background for this presentation. The starting point for TAT is of course that there are proven technologies that need to get to the hands of the end users, particularly farmers. And there are a number of intervening factors along the pathway of technology deployment um, for wide scale transformation. And some of the factors include soil fertility, water management, pest management, enabling policies, capacity development and outreach but also inclusivity of key actors, such as youth, women, small-scale farmers, private sector, and the need to establish relevant linkages between um, technology generators, uh, research institutions, academia, and a whole lot of them, including um, markets, commodity aggregators, uh, financing institutions, processors, warehouse operators, retailers, consumers, and the like. So there's the number of intervening factors that have otherwise undermined earlier efforts at scaling and getting large scale agriculture transformation. Noting this, uh, TAT then put in place a team or also a, a set of actors that will come together to provide these enabling services to the commodity compacts. And TAT identifies six of them, which Dr. Dashir had already uh, mentioned. So the, the work of the enablers are merely to work in concert with each of the commodity compacts and provide cross-cutting services by responding directly to the needs of the compact and facilitating the process of addressing these intervening factors to ensure we have successful and effective uh, deployment of the technologies that these compacts have. Thank you very much. You. Uh, the, the key word there is cross-cutting facilitation. Could you now focus on your enabler compact and give us a brief sense of some key achievements that the capacity enabler have made to contribute to the TAP program? Thank you. Um, the capacity development and technology outreach enabler um, is an enabler that highlights or focuses on two key aspects of capacity development and outreach. First, it focuses on strengthening capacity of end users to access the technologies in the first place. Now, on accessing in specific tools for auditing the capacities us to enable the compact to contextualize um, what is it that they need to do within 58 innovation platforms in 10 countries. Uh, we have actually been doing this with a team of partners 
that formed the Capacity Development and Technology Partnership Network, including the Africa Forum for Advisory Services, African Women for Agriculture Research and Development, Agriculture Research and Development, WIPAD, and we are we have connected also the national that strengthen the linkages at the country level. We have also trained 450 practitioners on the that are the moves for us to move um, the is to the end users. We have done so in six countries, bringing the country multi-stakeholders that I've mentioned together uh, through We're having some connectivity problems. Please bear with us. Irene, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, go on, please. We're having some connection problems. Okay, sorry. So with the, the 450 practitioners that have been trained on the innovation platform have also been provided with sets of materials that they are using to manage the uh, innovation platform, but also materials that help them to mainstream gender into the programs, as well as engage the youth and plan agribusiness processes so as to strengthen the capacities to scale. On the second area that the Capacity Development and uh, Compact has worked on is on strengthening capacity of end users to utilize. So once they have the access, they have to have the capacity to utilize these technologies. And we have done so with country-based networks uh, to identify and mobilize about 1,300 process facilitators who need to be trained on the nine technologies within TAT. This number grows as we, we move into new countries. In addition, we've developed 14 modular outreach materials jointly with specialists and extensionists in order to access these technologies. Our ongoing webinar series on livestock, high iron beans, maize, aquaculture compacts have so far also attracted 1,700 people in the past one month alone. Uh, at the aquaculture compact, for instance, is using uh, these materials across 12 countries in Africa. And the last point, Dr. Akem, is that it is important that we ensure that countries buy into the tax services. So FARA is using its position on the Africa Union biennial review process at the country level to advocate for the public sector to bring tax services as they implement the national agriculture investment programs. And we are seeing the dividend of it when the biennial pro processes uh, are being, um, are being uh, formulated as well as the, the NAM in crunch. So let me stop here, Dr. Ake. Thank you very much for the great and enriching answers that all of you have given. I think now we have a deeper appreciation of the operations of that and some of the wonderful achievements that we made. I'm tempted to go on and on with the exchanges, but time may not allow us. Uh, the overall theme for this partnership session is feeding the city. In just one minute, can each of you give or tell us how your compact is contributing to feeding the city? Abbas, I will start with you on cassava. Thank you very much. Um, one important thing that we need to do with cassava is to increase the processing of perishable fresh roots to food products that can be uh, eaten in the cities. And this is one focus for us. We have been training factories, factory operators, those who already have processing factories and they're not, they're not doing well. We've been training them on how to increase the processing activities, increase the quality of the products and, and then sell to the cities. We have made important, um, I would say, uh, impact in this area. And that alone is helping in reducing uh, imported food items 
that uh, city dwellers are uh, consuming. Let me let me stop there. Zaldi, how are we doing on wheat? Yes, apart from uh, you know increasing productivity and producing surplus, where which we have noticed that up to 70% of the wheat produced is being marketed. We worked on uh, forming a woman and use agripreneurs in value addition, which produce local food products, which are sold to local communities and local restaurants in the nearby towns through the association. The second area is uh, aggregating uh, storage and logistic transporting the surplus production directly to the flour meters, where they are supplying flour to the bakeries and pastries in the city, feeding the urban population, linking farmers to markets where they are directly selling to the flour meters within their uh, you know, target areas or even transport that to major cities in, the, in this context. Arin, what is the role of capacity development in feeding the city? Very briefly, please. Yes, I think I'll latch on this uh, market issue because that's one of the advice we always get in our meetings. And producers tell us that we need to identify the market first and then pro the products come later. So I think what I can say is that we, you need to have the linkage and the market information in both directions to the, the market um, as it were. So what we are doing is ensuring that we use our architect and set of partners to link up all the market chain actors, uh, ensuring that they are able to get the relevant information and build their uh, the, the market as much as possible particularly linking the small scale farmer to mainstream markets. So that's what we are doing and putting in building blocks at this uh, capacity development technology outcome to collaborate with the clearinghouse. Thank you very much for all these answers. The time we have been waiting for has come. I would like now to hear from our patient and attentive audience. I believe you have been posting your questions and comments on the chat box of this Zoom platform. Thanks to everyone who has participated in doing so. My colleagues have been going through your posting and shall select the first batch of three questions that they will read out so that our presenters and panelists can answer. We shall go through another set until our time is exhausted. I will get started by calling on my colleague, Sabra Lewis, to ask the first set of questions and if possible, indicating who this question is directed to. Sabra. Sabra, are you there? Yes, hello. Thank you, Dr. Akim. We have three questions ready. The first question is for Dr. Abbas and Dr. Zaudi. The question is, what has TAT been doing and working with the private sector seed companies and how has TAT worked with the Africa Seed Trade Association. The second question is about capacity building How for FARA. How is TAT using digitization to help build capacity of farmers and extensionists across the continent? That question is for Dr. Irene. The third question would be for the keynote speakers. And this is a question on the scaling strategy theory of change of TAT. So I would address that to Dr. Martin Fergene and Dr. Innocent Musebiana and Dr. Dashio. Thank you. Please, I just have to make your answer very brief so that we can have a chance to have as many questions as possible. The seed question, uh, Zaldi, can you go first, please? Yes, uh, the Wheat Compact is uh, working with uh, private uh, seed companies, uh, public seed companies and seed producers cooperatives. And one clear example I'll give you is in Sudan, wheat seed production was less than 5,000 tons over the last five, uh, 10 years. But the bringing in the private sector of seed companies in Sudan, today we are being able to produce around 60,000 tons 
in 2019-20, which is ready for planting for next season. So the, the work with the private sector would be able to produce seed, not only even for Sudan, and they are ready even to provide this seed to any country where it would be required. So the Sudan Seed Trade Association, which is a member of uh, Seed Trade Association of Africa, is a part and parcel of this partnership. Abbas, you have, you have quick link with your seed, of your seed system to the private sector, please. All right, thank you very much. Yes, um, seeds, supply of seed for cassava is still a problem across Africa. And so building the seed system is very vital for us. And we have been working with the private sector, for example, in Tanzania, where we have a teaching culture laboratory that was interested in the rapid modification of cassava. Uh, we trained uh, this company and we also trained national institutions from other countries for them to begin to produce uh, seeds. We have also in Zambia uh, established about in about 58 locations, seed farms being managed by farmers who we expect at the end of this planting season would then begin to sell these materials to uh, other farmers. And so we want to make some farmers to become seed entrepreneurs. That is the way to build a seed system. And there is a company in Zambia that needs uh, seeds for their farmers. So we want to begin to work with this uh, company through uh, AFDB um, Zambia uh, office so that we build the seed system for the company as well as other companies that are interested in this approach. So across all the countries, this is the way uh, we are going to build the seed system and ensure that this uh, farmers, seed, seed entrepreneurs will be linked uh, to, to seed, I mean, to uh, processing companies. And we are doing this also in partnership with uh, a project funded by the Bill and Melinda Gate Foundation, Basics in Nigeria and Best Cassava in Tanzania. And we believe we can take the model of these uh, two projects across all the countries where we are trying to build the seed system and increase the number of entrepreneurs that will be involved cassava seed production. Thank you very much. Irene, can you please take on the capacity development question? Looking at the digitalization and the issues that uh, the questioner asked. Briefly, please. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, this is about strengthening the end users. And we have done so through a number of ways. Uh, first of all, the innovation platforms itself tries to mobilize all the actors, including the end users. We have through uh, working with Access Agriculture provided uh, some partner videos on best practice that needs to be shared with the end users. And we're working a lot on the um, exchange of these videos. We are also uh, working to develop micro projectors for the NAS as part of uh, such videos. We, as I mentioned, we've developed a number of outreach materials that will be made available for local use. And during our uh, webinar series in, during this COVID period, we have engaged uh, a lot with farmers and end users and brought them face to face with the technologies that are being um, put forward by the compacts. So we're using a multiplicity of ways of reaching um, the end users uh, with the technologies and strengthening them to access and utilize them. Thank you very much. The question to the keynote presenters. Uh, Martin, could you take a shot at it first and then uh, maybe in London? Let's make it brief so that the three of you can give brief comments. Yes, uh, thank you very much. On the theory of, um, of change, you know, I think um, the first thing is um, you have to create a vision, right? And that, that has done. It has to be very clear objectives. You know, we had 40 million farmers. You know, then you also have to assess the gaps. We we'll find out that the biggest um, weakness in the seed systems in, in, in Africa is lack of them. Um, you know, very strong seed laws and also lack of capacity in the seed um, sector. And also we also noticed that um, 
there is the, 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 there's an unwillingness to take on risk by 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 six companies, and then of course then you, they, based upon that you now prepare a plan. Then the next thing, of course, are the activities. You have to create partnerships. You no, know, you have to create conditions for scaling. And so the theory of the, the, the theory of change is you must create partnerships. You must build capacity of, of the seed companies, and also you must um, mobilize resources. In, in perhaps the most important. So we, we have mobilized resources, and that is why Innocence and Musa Imana has come on board to help to work with the countries to make sure they can mobilize resources for the you know for the desired change. And then of course, you know, once you have done that, you've created a, a clear objectives, you have your you have, you have your activities, then you, you then the outcomes and making sure that you, you you sustain the outcomes, you know, and that that you can do by by carefully measuring what you're doing and also making sure that uh, you know you know your partners are, are fully engaged. Also, you have to link to the market because there's no way you will, you will have farmers absorb and, and adopt seeds, increase their yields when, when there's really no market. So you have to also look at the policy about the output markets. Thank you. Ken, could you give us your own one minute perspective on that? Ken. You know, Jen, if you're yeah, ready. I'm, you I'm ready, Chris. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Martin has done a great job. I'll just add a few more perspectives. One is to increase the food basket to transform agriculture. It's not one or two commodities. CAT has picked nine to start with, and we're expanding more than that. We also have to have the best technologies in the hands of farmers. And to do that, we've selected the best institutions in Africa who know exactly what these best technologies are and how to extend them. Three, we need to create the enabling environment that's like policy, irrigation, uh, soils and uh, fertilizers, et cetera. And that's why we have the enablers. And again, we selected the key institutions that are leading these areas in Africa to take it forward. And just as Martin said, uh, this, all this information is good, but it's it's used as a catalyst to demonstrate to countries and to private sector to really scale it up. Thank you, Chris, for giving me a chance to speak on that. I think that has said it all. Um, in London, we'll get it in the next round. So, time, let's go. Let's quickly go through the next set of uh, questions. Sabra, can you read out the next set of three questions, please? Yes, we have we have two questions here, and the the first question will start to innocent, and then if we can have Zaudi and Abbas answer it in one minute. How is TAT incentivizing private sector? There are many questions on the private sector, but this one has come out very strong. So, how has TAT incentivized the private sector for the scaling of technologies? That's the first question. The second question is how is TAT uh, how is TAT incorporating food safety components in the technologies? And the question was posed to maize, sorghum, and millet, and wheat. But since we have Zeudi here representing wheat, if he could answer that question, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Innocent, please, very brief. We are, we are a little bit stretching the time, but we are still okay. Briefly. Thank you very much, moderator. A, a quick one, maybe if you allow, just so add one small thing on uh, uh, the previous question, not was regarding uh, to uh, uh, take this scale, and especially as we we, we engage countries, and uh, as rightly said by Martin, and uh, within the clearing house, the third clearing house, uh, for the last two years we have built capacity. A, a experience as we move forward for the next step, especially uh, working together with uh, uh, the compact as we help countries while designing these uh, development loans that are programs that are help countries to address this issue of low productivity of crops, livestock and aquaculture. So we have this uh, capacity to work with the uh, countries to help them to design this program so that you can take this uh, uh, technology to the scale and bringing other uh, uh, technology. This is, was a catalytic fund from the FDB 
and uh, the support from the MGF as we uh, uh, proven that this model is working. So moving forward, ready to go, using the experience and how to countries to design this program that accommodating all these technologies. So when it comes to uh, uh, incentivizing uh, uh, private sector, so we are working closely as my colleagues uh, have already said being uh, uh, Abbas, for example, let's say pick one technology of uh, mobile uh, cassava processing unit that is proven to be working and addressing this issue of food safety, post-harvest losses, but that can be run by private sector because it's cost effectiveness that to have made a business model around that, that is very clear that for private sector to invest it, they will make a profit as we design the technology, but to also make a business model as we analyze the cost benefit analysis of that, that is one. And when it comes to this private sector, especially the seed companies, so it is very clear if you work with seed company with new varieties, it is a new market. So by creating this demand, especially awareness for farmers uh, through feed days, through demonstration, but that led by uh, uh, the, the, the seed companies, they are very clear for them that by in creating this demand, this now is source of income, it's just benefit for farmers, uh, but also for uh, uh, companies, private sector that they can make profit of this technology already developed. So that's a quick one I should say as we work with uh, the private sector. But of course, we need to work with uh, government as setting up the conducive environment that will create this incentive, for example, access to loan, uh, the credit and export facilities that will help them to get more uh, incentive and invest in these uh, uh, technologies as we do scaling up on the continent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nothing. Uh, food safety. Is it Abbas or Zaudi? Either of you, one of you, please. Can you touch on that? Zaudi, maybe. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, wheat production or whatever, the, the wheat compact, it's not about only production. It's about all the way from production to post harvest uh, management so that the quality could be maintained. So uh, in, 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 the, in the packages, the outreach packages will really ensure that all the processes from production all the way to you know, post-harvest uh, handling and management activities are properly handled. The technologies which are there would be used to ensure that food safety is not an issue. So uh, in wheat, I mean, it's much less as compared to maybe other crops. So uh, in each and every com compact, I mean, these are the things which need to be done to ensure that it's not only about production, but the whole process of harvesting, post-harvest management, and the processing would be done in a proper way so that the food safety should not be an issue uh, along the line. Thank you very much, Zaudi. It looks like we have a lot of contributions in the forms of questions and comments from many of you. We really appreciate those who posted these questions. We shall unfortunately not be able to go through all the questions because of the time that we have. But I want to assure you that answers will be provided to all the questions on the platform or on the TAT website. We invite you to visit the website tat-africa.org. tat-africa.org. We'll make sure that we we'll capture all the comments and all the questions Place them on that website and provide answers. When you visit the website, you also have the opportunity to request and be linked to any community specialist to follow up on any particular thing that may be of interest to you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity to thank the presenter, the panelists, and to you, the great audience, for the wonderful session. It's been a real pleasure serving you as your moderator. Yes, we have the task of sharing how technologies are contributing to feeding our city. I believe we are trying to show you just how we are doing this through the TAP program, increasing the productivity of some of the target community value chains and transforming them so that they are available in markets to feed 
the city population. I would now like to call on Dr. Kenton Dashil, the DDG, and the head of the TAP program team at IITA to make some closing remarks. Ken, over to you, please. Thank you very, very much, Chris. Uh, and uh, we appreciate uh, your moderation skills, your f facilitation skills uh, kept us moving forward very well uh, during this hour and a half time. Greatly appreciated. Uh, Chris, you've already thanking, uh, thanked um, almost everybody, but I want us to remember the key uh, donors for TAT, uh, the African Development Bank and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is also supporting. Um, I want to thank AGRA and, and AGRF because they've really backstopped us so well uh, to prepare for this uh, for this event and to actually uh, help us make sure it was pulled off in a successful way. We know that uh, TAT is one program that is uh, helping to transform African agriculture, but it's not the only program. We know there are hundreds of very, very good programs throughout the continent that are doing things similar to TAT. And I want to appeal to all of those programs uh, working in the delivery, uh, the dissemination, the scaling of technologies for agriculture in Africa. I want to encourage all of you to reach out to TAT. We would like to have you as one of our partners. We would like to have you to exchange ideas with like we've been doing today. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've really enjoyed the last hour and a half. Uh, I hope you have also enjoyed it. As Chris has said, please visit our TAT website. We're going to make sure we answer all the questions that have come in. We want all of you to feel like you are part of the TAT family, and we look forward to interacting more and more with you over the next three or four years. Ladies and gentlemen, this no. brings us to the end of our-, uh, of our Just a second, Ken, uh, sorry. Yes. We still have a minute, Dr. Fregene. I will not let you off the hook. Ah, good. I would like to hear from you. Your own last word, please. I think, I think Ken has said it all. I don't really need to say anything again. But just to thank um, our, our able moderator for, for, for her job well done, and also the people behind the scene, you know, and to thank Sabra Lewis and also Atai and many others, you know, and also Innocence, you know, for, for, for putting this together, and also ADR for hosting us. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll be cut off any second from now. You've done very well, and I really appreciate it. Thank you all for being with us. Let's meet another time, or let's meet on the website. Thank you, and goodbye.